Now, making bandages from durians without the smell, researchers at Nanyang Technological University have done just that. They say the process is cost-effective and eco-friendly, and it also helps tackle the thorny issue of food waste. The process involves extracting cellulose, which is a substance found in the cell walls of plants from the husks. It's then combined with a type of sugar alcohol known as glycerol to form a soft gel sheet. Organic molecules from natural yeast are added to give the hydrogel sheet antibacterial properties. The resulting bandage can be used for wounds, and it helps to minimize the formation of excess scar tissue. The researchers estimate that it will take up to two years for the product to hit the shelves. Nearly 12 million durians are eaten in Singapore each year. Up to 70% of the fruit is made up of its husk, which is thrown away. Researchers say they're looking to apply the same methods to even more fruits. For more, we're joined by William Chen. He's Professor for Food Science and Technology at NTU. Professor Chen, why durians and, and which part of the husk does this cellulose come from? Thank you for having me on the program. So uh, durian is, uh, as uh, uh, Steve already mentioned, uh, we consume uh, every year 12 million durians uh, in Singapore. So a lot of it uh, is actually discarded. So our uh, initial motivation is actually to develop technology innovation to reduce food waste. And uh, the white durian, actually, uh, we have developed uh, this uh, cellulose extraction technology to take uh, cellulose out of other side streams on food processing industry, including soybean residue. Uh, as we are developing innovation uh, technology on the platform basis, so we apply this uh, cellular extraction method to durian. And it turns out it works very well. And how safe is it to use such a hydrogel that's made from cellulose? or actually from food waste, in fact? Well, actually, uh, if you look at the, uh, we, we, we call this uh, durian husk food waste, but in reality, it has still have a, a lot of value because, it, uh, first of all, it's high in the fiber content. So actually, we consider this not a waste, but rather a misplaced uh, resource. So we take out cellulose using a green technology as opposed to the traditional organic solvent or very expensive enzyme treatment. So in our case, we use environmental friendly green solution to take cellulose out of these durian hearts. So it's perfectly safe. Professor Chen, these bandages potentially have the ability to minimize the formation of excess scar tissue, but what kind of wounds can they actually be used for? What are they good for in particular? <sighs> Well, uh, as we know, there are, we 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 come across a patient with eczema condition, so they actually need this uh, uh, hydrogel, which is moist, and the antimicrobial will actually uh, when they apply this uh, um, antimicrobial hydrogel, which are degrad biodegradable, by the way, uh, that this will help the patient will uh, feel better and then the soothe the pain and the and the discomfort. So this is one of the applications of our antimicrobial and biodegradable hydrogel. And tell us about the process then, the how long does it take to make one of these and how feasible is it to turn into a sort of a large scale production? Well, uh, at the NTU, when we develop technology innovation in the food space, we take care of two uh, key factors. First one is uh, it must be simple. A uh, second one, it must be cost effective. Only then we can talk about scalability and the industry partner will be willing to work with us. So this is the same case for this uh, durian has derived uh, hydrogel. And uh, so it is a uh, first, uh, we use a very low cost uh, green solution to extract cellulose. A second, the raw material uh, durian has uh, cost almost nothing. So uh, the scalability is there and uh, we have done so with uh, a number of other innovations with uh, uh, industry partners successfully in the re in recent years. So scalability, there is potential there, but how will these bandages actually compare with the conventional ones that we're more used to, especially in terms of pricing and, and more importantly, performance? Right. 
Uh, so, uh, if we go to the pharmacy these days, we will see uh, plasters everywhere, bandages. Uh, most of the these uh, bandages uh, contain chemicals. They are synthetic, and uh, the, for the antimicrobial bandages uh, currently available, they uh, make use of these. Uh, they 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 make use of the property from chemicals like uh, uh, nanoparticles or silver. Whereas ours, the antimicrobial property come from plant-based substances, so it's much more uh, uh, natural and friendly uh, to uh, consumers. And also, um, this uh, we are actually providing an uh, additional option for consumers to choose. So we're not here to actually to tell consumers to uh, take this one and nothing else. So it's really a progressive uh, um, a movement to let consumers be convinced of the uh, property of our uh, hydrogel Base uh, bandages, and uh, over time, uh, demand will drive supply. So over time, when the production goes up, uh, we expect the price will come down. Well, thank you for explaining it all to us this evening, Professor William Chen from for the Food Science and Technology uh, Department at NTU.